Sitting at the corner of 9th and Hennepin, La Meridian Chambers calls itself a boutique art hotel, featuring its own modern gallery, where even a pile of trash becomes avant-garde. But the most precious piece of work framed on these walls may not be in the gallery, but in the bar. It's the hotel's liquor license. That license was in limbo last March. It had been held by the hotel's restaurant, D'Amico Kitchen, which had moved out of the chambers a couple months earlier. A new restaurant, Marin, was still a few months from moving in. So the chambers needed a new liquor license, and quickly, in time for the grand opening of the Burnett Gallery, which houses pieces from the private collection of the man who owns and operates the chambers hotel, millionaire real estate mogul, Ralph Burnett. Late on a Friday last March, none other than Ralph Burnett himself called Minneapolis City Hall wondering where the heck his liquor license was. He not only contacted the mayor's office, but also the office of Councilwoman Lisa Goodman. And when someone like Ralph Burnett picks up the phone, things tend to get done. But before you get a liquor license, Minneapolis police conduct a background investigation. At the time, there was a backlog of cases, but a rush request for the chamber's liquor license had landed on the desk of Lieutenant Chris Hildreth, a 24-year veteran of the MPD, who started digging into the chamber's financials. Ralph Burnett owns the chambers and the W Hotel in the Fauché Tower through a private holding company bearing his initials, RWB Development. There were also other minority investors, and two names caught the lieutenant's eye. Auto dealer Denny Hecker and Ponzi schemer Tom Petters, two men who got rich and eventually went to prison for stealing other people's money. Ten years ago, before either man was indicted, they were investors in the Chambers Hotel. Hecker investing only 87000 But Petters went in for $1.2 million, an investment of nearly 6% in the Chambers Hotel. Now that percentage is important because under state law, a felon can't own more than 5% of a business holding a liquor license. But in the Chambers liquor license application filed last March, suddenly Petter's interest in RWB development was only 3%, below the 5% threshold. Lieutenant Hildreth wondered, how did that happen? The officer Hildreth was, was on a, a wild goose chase. Dennis Monroe is Ralph Burnett's attorney. He says Lieutenant Hildreth didn't understand Burnett had injected $8.7 million of his own cash into the chambers, according to financial documents, thereby lowering Petter's percentage. And he suggests in some of these emails that there's something funny going that's, on about that. That's, 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 the, I, I'm a, uh, I'm a corporate lawyer. That's, that's, uh, it's called uh, additional contributions and other people don't make contributions as automatic uh, dilution. It was provided in agreements and, uh, Obviously, uh, Ralph took the burden of continuing to keep the, the chambers moving ahead. But Hildreth learned Burnett was also taking money out of the chambers. $10.3 million, according to a 2011 tax form he saw. Money was coming in and going out, and Hildreth thought he wasn't getting a straight answer. He was just, uh, he's a suspicious, I think he has a basically a suspicious nature. He saw the, the name Petters, and he automatically jumped to conclusions that were totally unfounded, ill-conceived, and, uh, and erroneous. Or was the cop really onto something? We may never know, because the trail abruptly ends when the lieutenant says the assistant police chief, Matt Clark, ordered him to shut down the chamber's investigation the week before it went to the city council for a vote. Lieutenant Hildreth wouldn't agree to an interview, but the Fox 9 investigators followed his paper trail, reviewing 500 pages of financial documents, reports, and City Hall emails. The MPD at first refusing to release the public file, then several delays, until we finally confronted Police Chief Janae Hartel. Why do you think it's taking me so long to get information on this? Tom, I'm not gonna answer the questions right now. Really? really? Well, the deal is we have a liquor license that the investigator, your own police officer, didn't want to sign off on. The city gives a positive recommendation, and there are all these questions about whether they were paying tax for the liquor license, and suddenly we just stopped this investigation. I think it's a reasonable question. I've been trying to get an answer for a month and a half, and I can't. And I'm not aware of that, Tom, and when I'm done with my meeting, I'm happy to um, look into that and have a conversation. Okay, okay? I look forward to it.
But the chief never did agree to an on-camera interview. In a written statement, she told the Fox 9 investigators, MPD was satisfied the requirements were met. There was nothing inappropriate done by the department in any way. But Lieutenant Hildreth's own emails and notes will tell a much different story. Lieutenant Hildreth eventually came down here to the Chambers Hotel to meet with Ralph Burnett and the hotel staff. The lieutenant wanted to know precisely what was Tom Petter's stake in the hotel, and he also wanted to know about the liquor license they were currently using. But the lieutenant thought the more questions he asked, the more evasive the answers became. Lieutenant Hildreth's notes from that meeting show he wanted to know who was currently supplying liquor for the Chambers and who was paying the sales tax on it. Lieutenant Hildreth suspected hotel staff was bringing the liquor in from Target Center a couple blocks away, where Burnett owns Hubert's Sports Bar and the catering service. The lieutenant says all he got were unsatisfactory answers, and he apparently wasn't the only one. Attorney Doug Kelly, the court-appointed receiver, has been trying to claw back what's left of Tom Petter's $3.5 billion Ponzi scheme. According to Lieutenant Hildreth's emails, Kelly told him all is not good in Ralphie Burnett land, that Burnett was playing fast and loose with the numbers and was squirming. By this point, people may have been squirming at City Hall, too. Remember those phone calls? One came into the mayor's chief of staff, General Rourke, who writes in an email, just got a call from Ralph Burnett about the situation at Chambers Hotel, art opening at 6 p.m., not trying to make a special case at all for anybody. But that didn't stop her from texting the mayor. I texted the mayor, she wrote, and he called me on it. He's got the highlights. A staff person for Councilwoman Lisa Goodman was also calling to check on the license. Goodman, who would not talk on camera, says it's not unusual that her staff makes checks like that at least once a week. By late March, Hildreth was still requesting more detailed financial documents from Ralph Burnett's attorney. When suddenly, on March 28th, Lieutenant Hildreth writes that he, quote, received an order from my commander at the direction of Assistant Chief Clark that I was to discontinue the investigation into the chamber's file. He says he's ordered to write up his recommendations without further review. And in a detailed memo, Hildreth lays out 10 reasons not to give the chambers a liquor license. The unanswered financial questions, the investors, Tom Petters and Denny Hecker, who are convicted felons, the illegal transfers of liquor stock, irregularities in payment of the liquor taxes, and so on. But the man in charge of the civilian side of licensing, Grant Wilson, had no problems moving ahead. Going directly to Hildreth's boss, Lieutenant Bruce Falkins, Wilson asked the police department to recommend approval, saying a negative recommendation would force the city council to consider, quote, a number of disputed facts and could end up before an administrative law judge and take up to a year. Wilson ends with this line, the media attention such an action may draw will negatively impact all parties involved. Hildreth gets wind of this and fires off another final email to Fulkins, his supervisor. Quote, civilian side recommending licensure despite incomplete investigation. Consent items so no public disclosure of facts. You aware of this? All in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed. And those items are approved. He never got an answer. In the end, that's exactly what happened. The chambers got its liquor license without discussion or disclosure with a positive recommendation from the Minneapolis Police Department. Councilwoman Lisa Goodman even had her wedding reception at the chambers this summer. And Police Chief Harteau had hers at the W Hotel, also owned by Ralph Burnett. And Lieutenant Hildreth, three months after the chamber's investigation was shut down, he got transferred. So in the end, was the taint of the Petters money worth denying a liquor license? It was for the Redstone restaurant chain, which had to divest itself of Petters' 15% investment in the company a few years ago after New Jersey regulators threatened to take away their liquor license. The reality is there are clubs in downtown Minneapolis, like Epic, where people get murdered, and Epic still has its liquor license. Perhaps Lieutenant Hildreth was overly suspicious of the white-collar names of Tom Petters and Denny Hecker, or maybe he did his job just a little too well. Either way, for the police chief who touts her department as being transparent, the case is officially closed.